So welcome everybody. My name is Benson Juarez and I'm with Privy and thanks for being here tonight. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun looking at some uh, different ways to find analyzed deals. We're going to find some deals live. And my special guest tonight is Sean Young. Welcome, man. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's always an honor. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's going to be a fun night. Uh, we, we chatted briefly a couple of days ago and, and you've got a lot of exciting things going on right now in your business. Tell us what's working, what's working for you. Indeed. Well, yeah, guys, I, I, I'm, I, I keep it going. Uh, nothing. Wow. I'm not sure what just happened with my video there again. My apologies, guys. My apologies. Seems like it just keeps turning off there, but I, I'll turn us back on. <laughs> but uh, there we go. All right. But yeah, with with my business there, um, my wholesaling business, guys, it's the same same techniques that I share shared on previous videos. If you guys have not been on those videos, but of course, if you're brand new, um, what we do, guys, is, is we set up systems. We set up strategies and, and systems, proven systems that work. And we keep doing the same thing over and over, day in and day out. We go out, find the, the, the deals. We match those deals with our cash buyers. We close out the deal. Uh, <clears throat> rinse and repeat. We do it over and over and over. We do that with properties, single family homes. We do that with land. So guys, um, it, it, the opportunity is out there, but the key to it and the key to what I was uh, saying just now, guys, is systems. You got to have some things in place. Once you got, got your tools in place, figure out a system on how to utilize those tools so that you can maximize the, all the tools that you have in your arsenal. And so, Sean, you also coach and teach people how to do wholesaling um, along with your day-to-day -day wholesale business. You know, how do those things work together for you? Yeah, they work. They work great together, actually, because I'm always I'm always in the in the mix. I'm always talking about um, the real estate business in, in some form or fashion, talking about some level of investing, whether it's with my team, um, whether it's us, you know, working through the deals that we've got on, on the board, um, getting those closed out or whether it's working with my students doing the exact same thing. It, it constantly keeps me in the loop. Uh, it keeps me fresh because I, I don't do the the. Um, I don't do the some of the more day to day tasks that that other members of my team do, such as my my virtual assistant, my acquisitions folks. You know, there, there's there's different people that handle different activities to get us to the finish line. But I do oversee that process. So it keeps me very well uh, engaged with what is happening right now with the market and, and lets me know when I should pivot, when I should you know make a little adjustment here or adjustment there. So it's awesome. There's there's nothing like being involved. You know, a lot of a lot of folks out here they teach a lot of theories, but it's been quite some time since they since they since they have actually tried to utilize those techniques, theories, strategies. And uh, I'm not one of those folks. So so that's that's how those intertwine, uh, Benson. Hope I answered that for you pretty good. No, you make a good point, man. There's a lot of people out there that are better at selling coaching programs than they are at actual coaching. Right. Yeah, and it's just kind of what the way the business has gone is mm -hmm. they said, well, I can make more money teaching people how to actually do deals. And then they haven't done deals in a while. And, you know, markets change and techniques change and, you know, pandemics happen. And so, you know, all of a sudden we've all got to pivot and try to operate when all this new, these new challenges are coming out of, at us. And you mentioned one of the things that I really like about your business is the virtual assistance. Right. So the majority on the, of the people on the call tonight probably aren't doing this full time. Probably maybe we have some full time investors, but, you know, what kind of um, recommendations or advice would you have for investors that are trying to make this work part time? Sure. Well, guys, I, I would say out of my students that that uh, that are in my one on one coaching program, which is a, which is different than a coaching course. I do have a course and I have a one on one coaching program where I actually sit down with you. I have a strategy session, come up with a game plan on, what, on what's gonna work best for you. We choose a market using data, and then we actually set up your business and build your business out for you, um, a fully functional operating wholesaling business. We don't just tell you these are the th theories, this is what you should be doing. We actually build it for you and then show you how to operate that. So guys, I, I say that to say that, um, half of my students are have a full-time occupation. I have folks that are chiropractors. I have folks that are doctors. I have folks that are, you know, I mean, surgeons. I have folks that are, you know, teachers. And you say, wow, surgeon? Yeah, absolutely. Real estate is a great, great path 
for of wealth for lots of folks. Um, some people go down a career. I have attorneys. <laughs> I mean, I have people that go down career paths and they find that it's not uh, as rewarding or as um, financially rewarding as they might have thought it was, was going to once be. And, you know, I have conversations with, with folks all the time when I'm out and about. And I suggest that each and every one of you guys take this piece of advice right here. Talk about what you do. Um, when you're out there, explain what it is that, that you do. Um, get folks excited about what, you know, what industry you're in, you know, what, what are you doing? <clears throat> and you'll be surprised at how many people either want to do business with you in some form or fashion. They can provide you with referrals or they want to learn how to do what it is that you do. And when you get to that level where you can, where you can start, you know, sharing your practices and strategies with other folks, then definitely do so. <clears throat> but back to Benson's specific question, can you do this part-time? 100%, absolutely. I would, my recommendation to my one-on-one -on -one students is, is you, you should have at least two hours per day that you can dedicate towards the business consistently day in and day out. If you have that, that will provide you with at least 10 hours a week if, you, if you're Monday through Friday. So that will be sufficient um, for you guys to work on your business. And then, but it, you, you brought up the, the idea of um, virtual assistance, right? Like so in a case where they're putting in 10 hours a, a week, do they still need a virtual assistant? Does that improve that, it or do you use them con in conjunction together? That's in conjunction together, guys. That's definitely not without, without the virtual assistant, you're, you're putting in, uh, you're putting in a lot of time. <laughs> you're putting in 40 hours a week plus uh, dedicated to your business all by yourself, not including your other business. So what a virtual assistant can do for you is they come in and handle that heavy work, that, that heavy lifting for you. They come in and pull lists for you. They scrub lists for you. They skip trace those lists for you. For those folks who don't know what skip tracing is, that's when you find data on properties that you find an address and you say, well, I want to find who the owner of that property is so I can reach out to those folks and, and present my offer or see what situation they're in to see how I can assist them, which is the best way to approach it. You always wanna go about each person that you reach out to to see what problem they have that you can solve. And you wanna determine that very quickly um, within, within that interaction. Mm -hmm. So those are things that the VA does for you. They, they, they are the front, front line uh, defense or a front line um, assault, so to speak, however you want to position it, but they are your front line. Uh, they go out there and again, they do the, that scrubbing for you. They do the skip tracing for you and they do the cold calling for you, which is a part that a lot of folks don't like. Um, some folks say, hey, you don't need to cold call. You can do text messaging or you can just do ringless voicemails or you can send out postcards, or you can do you know, PPC. You can do so many things. But what I suggest and what I do is, is our foundation is cold calling. We do utilize uh, text messaging. We do utilize t uh, mailers, uh, but our core of our business is cold calling. And that's where the VA comes in. Uh, that VA is gonna spend hour after hour after hour uh, going through that list, doing that hard $5 per hour work that that you know you shouldn't be doing you you've got to actually ask yourself that do you have the time or do you have the money and that's why i'm making this very clear for you guys if you have the money you want to invest in a virtual assistant if you don't have the money you better make sure that you're that you are allocating your time to do all of these tasks that need to be done on a continual basis to have a business that operates for you and not play with this like it's just a hobby yeah well said and, and that brings up like the technology side of the business, right? There's a lot of uh, automation that's built in and, and systems that are exist uh, like the Privy system that can help you do a lot of those tedious tasks. And you mentioned before about using the data to find the areas to invest. Um, you know, that's one of the things we specialize in, right? Because what we can do is we can track where all the deals are being done and then give you insight into the market on what the actual buyers on the ground are doing for success. And if you can have a better sense of where you should look and what your end buyers are doing, then you can put together a better strategy on how to find them, number one, but also to help them find the deals that make sense for their buy box. You know, what kind of properties are they looking for? You know, what, what are they buying them for? What are they selling them for? And so we've been able to automate a lot of this through our system. And when we originally built it, it was more about 
bringing in all the data so that we could run numbers accurately, right? Like if you find a, a motivated seller and they say, okay, great. Well, what are you going to buy my property for? And if you don't know your numbers or you don't have an accurate way of determining after repair value and then figuring out your maximum allowable offer, then you just wasted all that time on that lead Absolutely. by not being prepared. And those leads, I mean, I don't know if you've calculated on a cost per lead basis, but sometimes hundreds of dollars just to get some one person on the phone, right? Absolutely. It's about $225, $235. To okay. Get so $235 yeah. you just spent and not being prepared with the proper data or having you know the proper analytics in place can be a huge costly mistake. So when we built Privy, we want to make sure we had automation in the system. Um, also, we want to make sure that you can do your local market research to figure out where the hot areas are at, where you should be looking for deals, where you should spend, be spending your marketing dollars, uh, but all based off of what your buyers are doing on the ground, what's working for other investors in your market. And not only and, that, but Privy delivers that to your email each day. Once you get that set up, it, it like like Benson was saying, those automations, which is huge, guys. So you don't have you don't have the excuse. Well, I can't got too many tools to log into. Guys, you get in there and it'll send it to you on a daily basis so that you know what is moving and shaking every day. Oh yeah. And markets shift, right? So like maybe what was working in December 2020 is not working in April of 2021 because markets evolve and they shift and things change. And so if you're still using just six month old approaches can have a huge effect on how successful you can be today. And so um, you talked about the time, right? And using virtual assistance, this is part of the automation here too, because unfortunately, when you're searching for deals, you spend the majority of your time running comps on properties you're going to say no to, right? It's an unfortunate situation. It's kind of like, okay, but people realize that it's true. So if you're spending 90% of your time, 95% of your time running comps on properties you're going to say no to, what if you could eliminate all those from the very beginning? Now, one of the things that, that we um, do, and I know that you know, it took us a while to get on that same page, Sean, is you know there's all kinds of places you can get deal flow that don't require as much time and effort. So you know Sean's business, is uh, the core is um, cold calling. But, you know, he's also imp implemented, you know, on-market deals into his business. But in both cases, you need to be looking where your buyers are at. If you're in a place where no one's buying, then you can't wholesale a deal, right? It makes, makes perfect sense. But this also goes for the fix and flippers or the people who are building a portfolio on this call. If you're not in an area where you can get a good R ARV because there's no comps, right? And if no one's doing deals then you can't make a deal work. The numbers won't work because all your values would be based off of homes that weren't renovated. And it seems like obvious, right? Like, duh, of course that's the case, but uh, most people just aren't thinking about it that way because they're just, they're just chasing leads all day. So if you have an approach, a strategy where you can say, okay, here are the areas I'm going to invest. And this map right here is actually showing where those hot areas are at. So red's the hottest, blue's the coldest, and these areas in between, we're not in yet, Privy isn't, but we will be soon. We're actually going to be nationwide here within a matter of 30 days. Um, but right here on the left are all the markets we're currently in. And then visually, you can see it on the map. So you might say, okay, well, what does this really mean? Well, I'm in Denver, right? So Denver, 866 deals have been completed in the last uh, 12 months where they purchased it, fixed it up and sold it. And the value of the home went up at least 25%. And that's based off of the filter that I created right here. Um, so you can change this, this number around. It's up to you. But the point of this is to find investor activity. So even deals that maybe had thinner margins on the back end, we want to know about those too, because you know, even if the investor lost money on the deal, it doesn't affect what you, the value of your house is going to be. Just what he sold it for, or what she sold it for is what affects your value. So this is just to find the investor activity, and then you can put a strategy together. So if I was going to choose a market to go into right now, you know, I looked at the West Coast, um, you know, and I had to choose between all of this. I would probably be in um, either the Oakland market, right, which is in Northern California. Uh, if I was going to be in the Los Angeles area, I'd want to be right around here um, in this kind of Inglewood area. Oh, this is the hottest area in all of Los Angeles, and coincidentally, this is where um, 
they just built a new stadium for uh, the Rams and the Chargers. So that's this isn't a coincidence. This is hot. This is an area where there's you know some gentrification going on. And then you know you look at some of these names and you see oh, Compton, Watts, Inglewood. Like these are areas that people just wouldn't go into a few years ago. But this is kind of the this is the real estate game, right? You you find an area where there's properties you can improve the value. And then, you know, it starts out with one fix and flip and two, and you don't ever want to be the first person to do a deal in a market because you won't make much, but you know, you, you don't have to be a trailblazer to make this thing work. You just follow what other people are doing. So let's say you wanted to get in the Los Angeles market. Well, you come right in here and you zoom in and now these clusters are going to show you the deals that have happened on the ground. So here's one that just closed yesterday went for 1.8 million crazy numbers. I'm in Denver. We're, we're probably about half this much in some of these areas. Um, this report right here is called a live comparative market analysis. So our algorithm automatically pulls comps on every single property 24 seven using the same approach that I would use as an agent and the same data that I use as an agent. But instead of doing it manually, like I used to have to do before privy, it all happens in a fraction of a second. So here's the property. Here's the comparables on the map. And you guys, this is live data. So it's not you know, data that you're getting from Zillow, which we know is questionable. You're not having to rely on your agent to do every little thing for you. This is all just happening in seconds. Uh, we also bring in the rental data. So if you're doing Burr or you're building a portfolio, or if you're a wholesaler and you've got clients or buyers who are doing Burr or building a portfolio, you can provide this rental data as part of the market analysis. And then we show you the before and after. So this is a really great way to learn the actual and, and business. Really, before you move quickly, for, yeah. for for those folks who don't know, Burr, buy, rehab. I mean, excuse me, buy, re, re, um, yeah, buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. That's what that stands for, guys. Just in case you, you're like, Burr, what is he talking about? It doesn't look cold. Yeah, out. It's, it's, it's sunny outside. in California. I, I, <laughs> I can show you my outside. It's actually snowing right now. But that's not what I meant. I'm, I'm not cold. Thanks for doing that, Sean Burr. Sure, no, no I forget that there are people in all different experience levels on the call. And, you know, you might be a really experienced wholesaler. I've been doing it for 20 years and not know what Burr is, right? So it also depends on your discipline. So Burr is like when you're buying a house from the perspective of a fix and flipper, but instead of selling it at the end, you just keep it as a rental, right? And it's, it's a really good strategy. But um, part of the, the challenge in any market is, is learning like, well, what's happening on the ground and when I first um, showed you the slides here, what we're talking about here is, is virtual real estate investing, virtual wholesaling. You don't have to be limited by the challenges of your own local market. If you are in an area that is crappy, like Denver, then find deals someplace else, right? And it's actually, it's, it's, it's way easier to do virtual when you're wholesaling because a lot of wholesaling has a virtual to, virtualness to it anyway. Um, a lot of it's on the phone, you know, a lot of it is done or, um, you know, via zoom now or on Facebook. So, you know, but you still want to learn the business. So right here, here's a property that our system flagged as a deal and it was 1.3 million, right? So here's what the house looked like before they fix it up. And it actually isn't horrible, but you can tell there's definitely dated design going on here. Like if you have tile countertops, um, you know, it's just kind of real, I don't even know what you call it. I mean, it's dated, but it's just blah. Like it, to me, it just looks like a bunch of just browns all mixed together. You, you know, when you mix a palette of color, it's just how this feels. And somebody had, you know, some great ideas. And here on the right is what they actually did to it. So you can see exactly what kind of construction they did. You can get design ideas. You know, there is, um, you know, the, all these fix and flip shows that are out there that get some of us interested in in the business. But you don't want to go and just do what you saw on television in a neighborhood. You want to do what's appropriate for the neighborhood. And you learn that by looking at these properties here. So this is a house, this is the after product. So they sold it for 1.8 million. So they grossed about $600,000 in this deal. Now, this probably wasn't a very thick deal, meaning they didn't have huge net profits because this is a pretty high-end renovation. Would you say, Sean, like, what do you think they spent on this? Uh... In California, I, I'm not not familiar with the prices out there, but uh, I mean, it definitely looks like a um, like a definitely like a modernized upgrade. Absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking like 200 grand. That's probably what they put into it. 
I would say um, about one, yeah, about one fifty two hundred. Yeah, and so if if that's the case, then that you're leaving over about four hundred thousand for other miscellaneous fees and profits. So, you know, six figures um, is a pretty good profit margin. Indeed. Now, let's say you were interested in wholesaling. You're like, wow, I can't believe those margins out there. Now, if you're wholesaling in an area where houses cost fifty thousand dollars in Chicago, it's harder to get larger assignment fees because everything's smaller. You got smaller assignment fees if you got smaller purchase prices. You got smaller assignment fees if you've got uh, smaller after repair values. But if you can do deals in an area where there's high values, you can actually make really large assignment fees. 10, 20, I've seen $100,000 assignment fees on homes that are in this price range. So the best way to, to figure out where these deals are being done is to look at the, the sale information for fix and flips. So every one of these fix and flips that happened, we have who the, the, the fix and flippers were. So in this case, um, this was a, a trust, the Michelle Olenek Revocable Trust. So this is the, the actual company that did the flip here. And um, they're likely going to do another one, right? So what better way to build a buyer's list of people that are doing deals today then to look at the, the ones that closed most recently, like this one right here was closed by that trust. This one right here went for 1.7 million, right? If you can get a property under contract that's in the million dollar range and you know, you can get a $50,000 assignment fee or a hundred thousand dollar assignment fee. How many deals would you have to close in Chicago to make that same amount? Right? So maybe this was a new strategy where, okay, well, if I'm going to wholesale and I'm going to make a call, why call somebody that's in a $50,000 price point when I can call someone who's in a million dollar price point? Sean, have you ever thought about the business that way? Um, it, it, it works out like that sometimes, definitely. Um, but you can definitely make good spreads on, on, you know, some smaller numbers as well. But I always think about that. I never, I never, cons- I never shy away from big numbers because I know the potential to make more of a, of a spread is going to be there. It's, it's just, it's just going to kind of be by default, but I don't want you guys to feel like, Oh man, I didn't get a million dollar property. This property's only got 135 ARV. I'm not going to make anything because Benson and Sean said $1.8 <laughs> million properties. No, it's not. So I just want to be clear on that. But absolutely, you want to keep that in mind. Don't shy away from those bigger numbers. It's going to take you the exact same effort to close that deal on a $50,000 house as it will on a $2 million. Okay. So mm-hmm. you guys figure out how you want to direct your business. Um, but Benson, I want to, before you move past, I want to play devil's advocate and ask a question like I'm someone in the audience. Sure. But, but Benson, these properties are on the MLS. How do I make an offer on them as a wholesaler? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's the same thing. So every property, no matter the source, the numbers can work, can work, right? So, you know, just like uh, an off-market property, you have to write the offer and then have a way of assigning it. Right, so that's either through an assignability clause or by use of an LLC or a double close. So, but once the property is under control, if you write an offer on a property that's on market and it's at fifty percent of the ARV, and you can, um, and now it's under control, and you can assign it to somebody else, you just tell them what they want, what you want to get in the assignment. It's just so the the debate, I believe, is well, if it's on the MLS, then it can't be a good deal, right? Which you know, and I've gone through hundreds, probably thousands of properties, and it's just not true. There are absolutely deals that are getting done every day that they're buying at 20, 30, 40% of the ARV, which is in the exact same price range that people like to look for wholesale deals. So it, it is, and it also depends on what area, like, um, and who your buyer is. Like, this is Ellison White Homes. Well, Ellison White Homes, if we look at what they bought this house for, um, let's look here and see the before and after we can learn a lot about Allison white homes just by looking at what their track history. So if, if you can contact Allison white homes and, and they're willing to work with you and you can use this data right here as a door opener, you, you, f- you find Allison white homes online or you skip trace them and you call Allison probably is, is who you're talking to. And you say, Hey, Allison, I saw that house. You just closed. I really like the way you did the kitchen. It looks amazing. I'm a wholesaler in this area. And um, I'd love to you know, send you some properties. 
you know, tell me what it is you're looking for. It looks like this one, you know, it was a three bedroom, three bath, about 1700 square feet. You know, what, what other criteria are you looking for? So when you approach the call that way, it, it makes it such a way more easier call the walls. When these people are, are typically you get on and they're like, who are you? Why are you calling me? But you, if you lead with a compliment and now you're lead, you have data about a property they just closed, it changes the conversation. Now you're at the same level as them. And, and that can change the whole dynamic of a call. But this one, they bought it for a million bucks and they sold it for 1.7 million. So this thing was at 58% of ARV, right? So that's, that's a decent deal. I mean, in, in different markets, you, you hear about the, the ratios, right? Going up to 60, 65. Now, if it was 2% more, what's 2%? of a million bucks. What is that? $20,000. That's a $20,000 assignment fee. If you raise it up to one, up to, um, the 60% of ARV in Los Angeles, I know guys that are going to 70% of ARV on their acquisition price. And this was at 58. And if you, you could have beat Ellison white homes to this property, just by having better data and automation, you could have done this deal. You could have made a $20,000 assignment fee if you sold it at 60% of the ARV, which every whole, every uh, buyer in Los Angeles would take that deal. You, you'd have no, no trouble doing it. I mean, it, it, tell me if I'm wrong, Sean, like if you had came at somebody with 60%, right? So making, instead of making 650,000 on, on this gross, they made 630,000. That's likely a, a deal that they would go after, right? Indeed, indeed. So it's about leveraging the data, you guys, to put together a better strategy. Now, I know this is a, a kind of a different market, but I'm going to back out here and use the same data to find another area to look for deals in. Now, I know, uh, Sean, you're in Atlanta. So let's take a look at your market, okay? So I'm going to back out of here. And I want to jump over to your neck of the woods. And there were some other hot areas around here, you guys. Um, St. Louis looked hot, Chicago, Indianapolis. Um, Atlanta has some hot areas too, but I felt like we should look at that because it's, it's a little more relevant. And I don't know um, where everybody on the call is from, but I do want to look at Atlanta. So and while you're pulling that up, the, the other question that I'm sure that the folks are probably thinking out there as well is, all right, so, so I do find this property now that, that I've, I've got it. And it's not that I, I can't find an MLS deal because now I, I'm, I'm, I have access to the MLS with Privy. So now when I bring this information to folks, how do I bring value to my buyers if they have access to the MLS also, or if these are mark deals mm -hmm. that are on the market, how, how do I bring value? I could definitely position that, but do you want to answer that question? Yeah, I think what's valuable is the asset, right? So once you have the asset, that's the thing that's of value. So if you come to them and they don't have the deal and you have the deal, then that's the leverage, right? So once it's under contract and they're looking at it and they look at the numbers and they say, oh my gosh, there's a 40% margin here because you have it at 60% of ARV, then they have to make a, a choice in their mind. Well, do I want to make a big stink to say, well, I could find this thing on the MLS. Well, you could just say, well, you didn't. I did. I've got the property. Right. So if you want to make these margins, you want this house, or do you, if you want to go and find something on your own, you're more than welcome to do it. But here's the thing. I know buyers. I, I've, I know some of the heavy operators out there. They're doing hundreds of deals every single year. And a big portion of their deal flow is coming from MLS. And if you can find a property there, then they'll, they'll buy it from you. Um, I know a lot of um, buyers who are actually, um, doing, they're doing on market, they're doing off market. So it all depends on, you know, what your business model is. What I'm showing you here is not just how to find on market deals. I'm showing you how to do your research. We haven't even looked for deals yet, Sean. Exactly. I mean, this is just finding where the buyers are at. So you know where to market. So whether you're marketing using paper, you know, paper click on Facebook, or you're doing a mailing campaign, you need to be where the deals are at, where your buyers are at. Again, you know, if you're out here doing mailing campaigns to rock mart, and no one's buying in Rockmart, you're wasting your money. So send your mailers to where the red areas are, because this way, if you find a property, you're going to have more potential buyers. 
you're also going to have better comps, right? If, you, if the house right down the street, which is fixed and flipped and you can get in there and you can see what the, what they did to it um, and what they bought it for and sold it for. Now that's a comp, right? So you can prove ARV if you can find or locate something in this area, whether you find it on market or it, you find it through, a, you, you know, what your mailing campaigns or a bandit sign or, you know, um, some other off market marketing. So this is, this is how you learn the local business. So this is a hot area, right? So every one of these properties here has data about it that can help you leverage and be better. Now we've talked a lot about wholesale and that we are tonight because Sean's here. It's, it, it makes it even easier if you're not the wholesaler and you've got the, the revenue because you don't have to deal with the person in the middle. Um, but there's a lot more you know logistical challenges when you're doing the deal yourself, which is why a lot of people start off on the wholesale side of the business because it's a way to get into the, into the business and, and generate some revenue before actually um, doing the deal. Now, here's another one. They got this one for 80 grand. They sold it for 240. So this one was at, was at 30% of the ARV at asking price right on the MLS. These deals are out there. You know, you can see them all over the place. So leverage this data, learn either your local market or use this data to find a target market that's maybe virtual. So you can put together a team to actually go and do these deals. And again, you don't have to be in that same market. You just got to leverage the data, learn the market. And I, I tell you what, you guys, you can learn the market better being remote, leveraging the, the, what we have here than what some people on the ground know in other areas. It's just that most investors just are not laying a good foundation or groundwork and doing the research. If you do a little bit of front end research, it makes everything on the back end so much easier. If you target this area and you find a deal here and you go to market it and there's 20 fix and flips around you, the, the buyer on the, on the other end is way more likely to buy that house from you at the price you want for the assignment fee you want because all the comps are there to prove what that thing's worth. So if you reverse engineer the process, right? Looking for properties in areas where hot air, where that are hot and looking for properties in areas where buyers are buying, it eases everything. You're basically squirting WD-40 on the machine. So it's just more smooth, right? Absolutely. Everything you do the other way is going to put more friction in the process. It's going to cost you money. It's going to cost you time. This is going to be the, the easiest path to success is by targeting these kinds of areas. Now, Sean, do you have any like more input on, you know, that kind of that philosophy on, you know, being where the buyers are at and, and, and being able to, you know, prove ARV? That, that, yeah, I have a lot to say on that. Well, just it's, it's, it's huge, guys. This is a, the key thing. If, if uh, let's say you find a deal that's way off, you know, out somewhere in, in a, you know, very rural type of setting and there's, you don't see a lot of activity going on. There's actually no activity. You see that one house has sold like, you know, eight miles away in the past. Okay, guys, and, but you don't even know none of this yet because you're just shooting in the dark and you're, you're like, well, they said, you know, the state of, of uh, you know, Ohio right now is on fire. So I'm just going to go out there and, and market in the state of Ohio in, in different places. So you find yourself and you might even say, you know what, I'm going to market into in, into Columbus, Ohio, the, the big city. That's the major city. However, the city is, is a, is a, it is a city. And if you don't have data that's showing you where the pockets of activity are going on, your dollars are, are spread more thin versus you having target pockets to say, OK, these this is a neighborhood. These are zip codes. I can see, OK, the West End here, Harlan Terrace. Cascade Heights, whatever it is that you're, where, where, wherever you see the cluster of activity, that lets you know, well, you know what? I bet if I found something in that area, I wouldn't have any time selling it. But what happens is, is people find properties in areas, again, that are way out there, and then they try their best to market and sell that property because they're under the, the belief that if you have a deal, it will sell. And, and that is true to an extent, but you again, you got to find that buyer. What do you want to do? Do you want to play around? out someplace where you could potentially find a buyer potentially at some point down the line or do you want to be in an area where once you grab a deal folks are going to be you know almost in a bidding frenzy to get that property off of your hands because they want it that bad i'd say option number two 
<laughs> <laughs> right. And it, a lot of it too is opportunity cost, right? Like if you had unlimited amount of time and money, maybe you, you would, you know, it's not a bad idea to chase some of those kind of properties in these obscure areas, Indeed. but we already know that we, we, we have a shortage of time and money. So why bother even to marketing to those areas? So look at your, your lists, like, you know, likely you're buying a list or, you know, if you're you know, sourcing deals for someplace, figure out how to use that to target the best areas using zip codes. Zip codes is the easiest way to filter a list. So right here, this is 30310, 30311. So if I use that, those zip codes and I filter that list, right. And this also will save you on, on number of records, because when you buy a list, they charge you on a per record basis. So if you get rid of all of the records that are in zip codes that aren't hot, well, right there, you just saved a bunch of cash on leads that aren't going to pay off. Now you send the mailers to the zip codes that are hot, that are targeted where, you know, the buyers are at and where you can prove ARV, you're going to have a better outcome. Well, you save money on the front end, you save time and money. You're going to find deals that you can actually prove value on and that buyers will actually want to give you an assignment fee for. So and it, and it seems like a lot of this, when I, when I say it, some people hear it, they're like, okay, that makes sense, right? And it's just that a lot of this might be reinforcing things that you maybe thought were true. But what's great about this, you guys, is the data supports it, right? The data supports your gut feeling. The data supports like, oh, I always thought that area was hot. Now you can see all the deals that are in that area and learn even more about it. So it's, it's about like justifying what maybe the things you're currently doing, maybe proving some of the methods that you're currently using false, right? And helping you to get to, a, you know, saving money and time on, on learning that lesson the hard way, right? Like do the front end work. So let's look for deals in this area. So I'm going to actually just f switch the filter over. Um, I'm going to lower this to say 65% of ARV or less. Okay. Give us some margins there. And then let's say we don't want to go over 400 grand. And that might be a little high for this area, but that's the ceiling. And then let's say you know, anything that came on the market this week. Okay. And so now Privy's going in and it's pulling comps on every single property that are in these areas. And it's only showing us the homes that have the margins that we're looking for. So, we have a thing in Privy called Privy Preferred. So Privy Preferred is another layer of data that helps you to more easily find good deals. And the way you find those is by looking at Privy Preferred are the ones that have, that are green and blue. So see how this is green and blue, this icon right here. Mm -hmm. Now, why this one is Privy Preferred is because number one, the margins work. So if we flag this thing at 250, and we said we want it to be better than 65% of ARV. That means we have to have comps that are over 384,000 for that to be true. Now that, that's math that you don't have to be able to run on your own. This is all baked into the algorithm, but here's the house, right? So we, we need the comps that are over 384. Well, we know that's true because the al algorithm flagged this property. Now this is actually a pretty cool looking home. I think it's got great aesthetic appeal. You know, it's, it's obviously it's dated and they've done some painting and stuff, but the reason why I flagged this thing as a deal is because there's a comp right here that just went for 385,000. So that's showing that margin of at least in this case, 35%. Okay. So that's, that's what you're looking for here. Here's another house that's rough. <laughs> this one's for 150. This is maybe a teardown, but when they started this project, they didn't approach it from a teardown perspective because they're already they've already done a bunch of work to it yeah yeah you can see that you can see so maybe started. they they got it behind and you know they're like okay this is just too much work for us but this one um is in an area where there's a fix and flip that just sold for 285 this one went for 359 this one hasn't sold yet but it's under contract which then you can see the house so you can say okay wow look at this house this is how, how do we can we get to this 359 mark well it's by using this same approach. Here's basically your blueprint on what you need to do to that other house to get to that same mark. So at 150, we told the system we wanted to be better than um, 
Mm-hmm. But let's just say the because that house has like a cool, you know, look to the front of it. It had that that cool um, chimney. You know, maybe that changes the value a bit. Let's just say ours is only worth three hundred thousand. Even if it's if we take sixty grand off and it's only worth three, that's still a fifty percent of ARV, mm-hmm. right? So I mean, so Sean, if you if you had a property at fifty percent of ARV, right, you got it for one fifty, and you put, I mean, what kind of assignment fee could you could put on that? Realistically thinking, okay, there's room here to get a deal done, and for an assignment fee, just kind of knowing the limited things you know about this. If you get it for 150 and the ARV's 300, what what would you do with it? I would uh, the ARV is is 300. Mm-hmm. I get it for 150. I'm trying to, uh, and it's looking like that. I'm trying to. I'll probably sell that. I'll probably market that for. Three hundred is what is what it is. Three even. Yeah, I I just I took sixty grand off this, so, so I just said three okay. even to be conservative. Okay. Got it. All right, three even. I'd probably be selling this property here all day easily for for uh, one ninety five ish. I'd probably say one ninety five in that range. Oh wow! So that's a huge assignment fee. That's over forty grand. You think you can put on that, and you could find buyers for that. Absolutely. I in mean, Atlanta. If, I mean, so if, you know them the Atlanta market. You yeah, know what they're doing. Yeah, if we've got the margins to show, we've got the we've got we've got activity to show. They're they're gonna know better even than me because they're they're the ones who are doing the activity. So yeah, when you provide good numbers, uh folks are willing to to make good to to make sure that you're well well compensated. And uh remember, I said I was started off at 195. So let's say Benson was one of my cash buyers, and I, I'd only done a few a few deals with Benson in the past, and I really didn't you know, I didn't really understand where Benson was exactly in his head today, but he was the first one of my buyers who reached back out to me. 195 is my starting point, guys. That That's my negotiating point. That gives me right. a, a benchmark. Now, Benson can say, oh, 195. Come on, Sean. You know, I bought a couple of houses from you, man. Think you could bring me down to 185? You see, because you're setting the playing field. You're setting the, 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 the stage, so to speak, in the realm that you want it. And and uh, in a property like that, where you got proof like that, and in in this area, which I know the area, you, those are going to sell like hotcakes. Um, and they're going the folks who are going to put money into fix and flip and are going to make a good profit. Yeah, absolutely. Um. So, Sean, uh, Rodney's asking, like, how did you come up with that one ninety five? Was that just based off of kind of local market knowledge, or did you use a formula, or you just, just went off of like the percentage of ARV? I just kind of went off. Of, I just used it. I just used a number. I, I said, okay, the ARV is at, at 300. Um, my Mayo for this property would definitely probably be, have, have been around, you know, would have been around like maybe 160 ish or something, probably 165, 70, 170 ish. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I got it for 150, um, when I, when I know what I can make on it, I, 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 again, this is not emotional. I just go by numbers. So based upon what I know the numbers are and what this property can pull in once it's fixed and flipped, I want to make sure I get my profit as well. Everyone else is going to make a good profit. Why not you? And you mm-hmm. can't get it unless you ask for it. So that's why I, I threw that 195 out there. Uh, I'm not sure the gentleman who asked that question, my, my apologies, but that's why I started at the 195 because that gives us a benchmark. It gives us a plan field to at least negotiate down from right gotcha mm-hmm. okay yeah and every property is different right like Absolutely. if you started there and then you ended up at 160 you, that's still 10 grand right which absolutely you know you might have to go and and you know think about all the other th- other things you're doing to find deals and the unfortunate situation is that the majority of people that are they're targeting off market deals exclusively just never find a deal that's just that's the matter that's a fact Right. And so you, you want to have multiple sources of deal flow. You want to make sure you're putting your, your line in the water in multiple areas. But if you've got stuff showing up in your inbox like that, and then you've got, you know, mailing campaigns, you're doing cold calling, you've got other approaches, you're going to find some deals. And then by the way, if you find something, then next off market, somebody calls you off of one of your, um, one of your, your flyers or, you know, one of your calls, 
All you do is you just enter the address right in here to the search bar and our algorithm will build a comparative market analysis, pull comps on that property and show you all the investor activity in the area. So you can quickly determine what that property is worth on the after repair value. So you can determine your MAO. But if you don't know the ARV and you're targeting an area of a house way out here in Lithonia, then you're not going to be able to, to come up with an, an MAO that makes sense that, that they're going to take. If, they're, if all the comps in that area and all the sales are non-renovated homes, then you have, to, you have to throw a low ball offer out to them that they're not, not likely to take because th you still need the same margins to make the deal work. So okay. if there's no comps and the values, the ARVs are up here in an area where it's hot. Well, if the areas are down here, it pushes everything down. So now you have to throw out a low ball offer to make those same margins work. So it, and, it's and, so... Someone asked a Go question, ahead. Vince, and uh, the, gen the same gentleman who, uh, Rodney, asked a question. He says, well, what about factoring in repairs? This is what I want to say about, about that one. I know Benson brought it down to 300 for the sake of the, um, the description, but I, I remember him saying 360. And I know this area. So the properties, that's what they're actually probably going to sell for, to be honest with you guys. They're going to be around that three, 330 to 360 range, 320 to 360 range. So the, the numbers that, that I put out there were just based upon that. Of course, you have to factor in repairs. To come up with your Mayo, which is a, a, your maximum allowable offer, we take the ARV times 70%. Some markets is 65%. Some markets, it could be 75%. But let's say we're doing 70%. So it would be ARV times 70% minus repairs minus whatever fee that you would like to get. That's your Mayo. You say to yourself, well, I'm not, I don't know what the repairs are. I'm brand spanking new. That's why we don't get caught up with repairs. We do, we, we estimate, we do estimates. And then we use basic formulas to say, okay, what do I think it would probably need? And uh, because whatever you think won't even matter. It's going to matter. What matters is what are your cash buyers saying it needs? So just get an estimated ballpark and negotiate from there. So the reason why I say that is because with this opportunity I mentioned is showing you guys here, you're going to get multiple opportunities coming through. So you don't want to look for things that will stop you from getting these deals. You want to look for just the ways to be able to get these deals and how to make them be profitable for you, if that makes sense. Yeah. And here's the thing. Every property is a deal at the right number. So if you guys are looking exactly. at that number exactly. and you're saying, okay, it doesn't make sense at 150, let's just say it didn't, but it makes sense at 140, then offer 140, right? Yeah. It's, not, it's not a complicated thing. The, the unfortunate thing about this business is that everyone is looking for ways to say that this isn't a deal. When the easiest thing to do is just be like, what at what price does this become a deal for my formula? All you need is the leads. These are leads, you guys. We're not saying that this is like a slam dunk deal every single time. It's like, okay, exactly. here's an opportunity. What price do you need to get it at for it to make sense for your formula? Everyone has a different formula. Sean was saying in some markets, they do it at 75. Um, I know areas they're doing it at 80 percent and then subtracting out their costs. So don't look for ways to say no, say, okay, if that doesn't work for you, then lower offer a lower price. That's really that simple. Here's one that's for sale. Let's for do the numbers for that, for Rodney's sake. Let's do those numbers. 360 times 70%. Mm -hmm. That brings us to 290. Let's say these repairs on this property is, is 40,000. So somebody said a hundred grand. I don't know who it was, but just say it's a hundred. For repairs. Mm-hmm. That, that that's pretty hefty. That okay. would be a, that would be a pretty hefty repair for, for <laughs> well, that area. Do but a, a it, realistic number say that. than you think. I would say a realistic number would, would be probably what, what folks are going to do in this area is going to be about 45, maybe, maybe 50 at the most. I, I'm thinking, you know, just cause I, I know what goes on around there, but you know, I'm not, um, you know, I'm not, it's, there's nothing that's absolute. So I'll say that. So let me just uh, get this number here for us. 360 times 70 percent brings us to 252. Let's just say those repairs are, are 50,000. All right. Let's just say they're 50,000. That brings us down to 202. Now you got it for 150. Remember, so you have playing room. Your maximum allowable offer that you could have made to that seller was 202. You got it for 150. These things are selling for 360. So you got to make sure that you program your mind as well. It's all about mindset. Also, you have to have your benchmark set on what you want to get on these properties and ask mm -hmm. for it. 
and then negotiate from that point, or, or you're going to find yourself with smaller um, wholesaling fees and you'll get stuck in that realm of, of accepting $3,400, $4,200, $7,600. And there's nothing wrong with those. Right. But, but when you can get 22,000 or, or, or 32,000, and you're leaving it on the table because you are afraid to ask or go for it, then uh, that's that's what I'm pointing out there, guys, because you have the data to back it up. So it's not like you're asking for something that's out of out of the out of the the realm of, of being able to ask for that. So make right. sure you understand that we're using data, guys. Yep. And again, every property is a deal at the right price. So just figure out at what price that makes sense for you. And then that's the offer you submit. Here's another property. We found this one for 37,000. Um, the closest sold comp just went for 120 grand. And so at, at asking price, that one's at 31% of ARV. And here's the house. Wow. So guys, these deals are out there. You just need a better way of finding them. And with our comping algorithm, once you save this search, it will just email you these deals every day. And then you're just looking at the ones that make sense and going after those and the ones that don't make sense you skip them and go to the next one. But why this is so simple, you guys, is as you're learning the business and as you're trying to perfect the formula for getting the off-market marketing to work, you're, you're putting out offers on stuff like this every day, right? And you can't, you can't get deals under contract if you're not writing offers, right? And so if you just start off and wholesaling tomorrow, how long is it going to be before you can actually write an offer, right? And can you even build a business around that, right? Maybe you, you get, you can write one offer a week. I mean, I would actually challenge people on the call to, to say, how many offers have you written in 2021 yet? Right? Like you, you need to get your volume up. Here's a property you can get for 109,000, right? We flagged this property as a deal because there's comps in the 180 range. So at 109, this one's not as thick as the other ones, but 109 divided by 180 what did I do wrong there? 109 divided by 180, 60%. So you guys, the deals are there. You just need a better way of finding them. And with the platform here, even if you didn't do a single on-market deal, that's fine. Um, you know, that's up to you. But this is going to how you're going to decide what strategy, where you're going to look, find your buyers, mm -hmm. find the hot areas to invest in, find some hot properties you can write offers on that are on market. And in May, when we launch our national product, we're going to be adding in off market data. So I just spent the whole hour just saying, you know, trash and off market, but we're adding it. Right. And the, the point is, is that I wanted to kind of open your guys up to what's, what's real reality out there. More than 50% of all deals that are done are on market. So just figure out a better, a better way of finding them, right? What's a better mousetrap to getting your hands on some of those on-market deals? They're out there. You just need to find them. And so we'll give you the tool to do that. So in May, when we launch our uh, public record database, we're going to have foreclosures, absentee owners, vacancies. Uh, we're going to have properties that have liens on them, tired landlords, zombie properties, uh, uh, cash buyers, REOs, short sales. So all kinds of, of opportunities that are not on market, if you are dead set and, and not going for these, it's all going to be layered in the system. Um, I, I wanted to show you our system um, in the alpha, but I know our dev team is working on it. So I'm going to show you an image. I wish I could show you the real thing, but I want to show you uh, an image of the new system. So this is the new system here. Uh, we just completely redesigned it. And now we've got properties, we have all the off-market deals in here, we're going to be able to have one-click um, searches, and it's all going to be right here so that you can do off-market, on-market, um, whatever you choose to do, but all powered by powerful comping algorithms. So instead of just having a list of foreclosures, you're going to have a list of foreclosures over here on the left, and it's going to have a CMA for every single one of them. So you're going to know the, the ARV before you even send that piece of mail out or you pull that property up and you're doing your calling, you know what the ARV is in, in case somebody picks up that phone. We talked about a $250 you know, cost of, of lead. If you're prepared and you've got the ARV in front of you, when you're talking to them, you got a much better chance of closing that deal or at least moving it to the next step 
if you've got numbers that you can talk to them about. I mean, Sean, from, from your perspective, if you had the value in front of you while you're cold calling, like, does that change the conversation? Yeah, you, you got to have it. You can't, you cannot uh, talk ignorantly to, uh, to your sellers. I mean, of course, you're not going to, you don't want to intimidate them and make it seem like you're a massive corporation, uh, but you're, you're a person, but you've got to be an authority in your field and, and you've got to speak with confidence and you've got to know what you're talking about. And by having data in front of you, it allows you to do just that. Speak with confidence and authority because you are, are speaking, you're using numbers. It's not emotional. Uh, you don't have to fumble with your words. You're not fidgeting. It's just basically, sir or ma'am, uh, th this is what we've got. This is what we don't got. And, and that's that's just all, all there is to it is data. Yep. It absolutely is. So it's just about putting yourself in a better position. So I, I, I talked to tonight, you guys, about a lot of efficiency data systems, um, you know, putting some automation in your business, you know, leveraging that technology like I just showed you will make a huge difference. Um, and so if you're not um, using Privy yet, uh, I know it's going to be a huge benefit to you and in, in it, whatever your exit strategy is. Again, we talked a lot about wholesale tonight, but if you're doing fix and flip, it's the same issues, right? You need to have that data so that you're looking for the right uh, areas, looking in the right areas, making sure your numbers are right. Because, um, you know, when you're doing the deal yourself, like it's even, it's even more important to make sure your numbers are correct because your it's your money on the table, right? The wholesale people, wholesale people there, if they can trick somebody into a deal and still make money, they're happy doing it, right? <laughs> this is why you see so many wholesalers throwing bad deals out there. They're just hoping that they can trick somebody, right? Because they know the numbers aren't accurate sometimes. But if that's the only deal they have on their plate, they're just going to, you know, wish that it, say, hope that it goes through. more days to go before this contract expires. I'm just going to throw it out there. That's exactly how folks do. They do. They absolutely do. And so, but if you're doing fix and flip and it's your money, you got to be really good on your numbers, right? Yep. Zillow is not going to fly. Redfin, all these sites that people are using, they're not designed for comping. They're not designed for analyzing investment property. So make sure you got your numbers right. And before Benson moves forward, imagine if you're, you, you are one of those fix and flippers, guys, are, are you, you go out there to get private funding or, you know, your private lending, you know, you're going out there to get private money. When you've got data like this to present to your, to your lenders, potential lenders to say, Hey, these are the numbers. And this is what I've got. Um, again, it makes you look a whole lot more um, like an authority in, 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 the, in the space versus someone who's saying, Hey, calling someone and saying, Hey, I, I can tell you all about this deal. This right here is, is data. This is, this is data. You can print it out and uh, provide that to you, to your um, potential, potential lenders as well um, as a partner with you to partner on that deal to say, Hey, let me go get it. I need your funds and money to take it down, but I've got it. I found it. And these are the numbers on it. Not, not only have I found a deal, but these are the numbers. Oh yeah. And, and when you, you don't just give them a number, you show them the properties Absolutely. And what they sold for. And then you can, those are, that's the proof of the numbers, right? Of the data. It's like, okay, here's the house down the street that was just flipped. Here's what they bought it for. Here's what they sold it for. I can get mine for $10,000 cheaper, yep. right? Slam dunk deal, right? Lender. So it, it just makes everything more simple. Mm -hmm. um, so our, our pricing right now, if, if you went to our website, um, getprivynow.com, 97 bucks a month. We priced it really affordably. Uh, no matter what your, your experience level is, you know, we got people who are brand new using Privy, who are learning the business, finding deals, closing their first deals with us. Well, we've got people who are doing, trying to do a hundred deals this year. Right. And so, it, and it also doesn't matter what your exit strategy is, uh, whether you are, you are doing fix and flip wholesale, burr, uh, we've got people from all different areas who use Privy for the data that's available. We've got hard money lenders that use it, fix and flippers, people who are doing burr, buy and hold. Um, I've got a group of, um, stagers who use privy, they, they use the data and look at the before and after pictures and they go and they try to find fix and flippers mm -hmm. and they show how a stage property can get more money. And they're, they're leveraging our data to do that. Like it's a weird use case, but where do you fit? Right. We also have a lot of people who are outside the country who use privy who will never set dealer. I've got people, tons of users, say tons, several dozen users in Israel, I've got people in Canada, Mexico, the Middle East, Europe. Like if they can do deals here virtually, you can too, right? And you're, you're likely right here in the US, same as me. 
So I, I'm gonna, I put together a package for you that includes some discounts um, and also some, um, some uh, bonuses, but I want you to be able to get in before things change because once we launch nationwide and we add in all that off-market data, our pricing is going to change. So if you want to take action tonight and lock in your pricing, I'm going to give you some um, some bonuses. So the first thing is I'm going to grandfather you in. So you're going to get in before our pricing changes at the discounted price I'm going to show you tonight. And you're going to get all that off-market data for no additional charge in your system when it launches here in a matter of weeks. So that's going to include the foreclosures and the absentee owners and the vacancies, all the owner information, mortgage information about these properties. So if you're, again, if you're focusing exclusively on off-market, that's fine. We'll have plenty of data there and leads for you to power that business. And so I'm going to give you that bonus for free. That's going to grandfather you in. Um, the next thing is, is more education, guys. Like the best way to learn this business is by emulating others. And this is why Sean is such a valuable asset is because he's been there and he's done that. He's done dozens, maybe, I don't know, hundreds, Sean, of, deal, of deals. Like you've been involved with a lot of transactions. Absolutely. Leverage. Sean and his, ex his experience. Um, and I went out and I talked to a bunch of other different kinds of investors from people who are doing uh, multifamily properties to wholesale, to uh, fix and flip. And I asked them like, well, what's working for you? What's not working? Give me some nuggets so I can give them to my users. And that's what this is here. So I put all that together, wrapped it up in a nice bow for you. Um, and there's a lot of valuable information here. I give you that for free too. Um, the next thing is the support. So we are very hands-on here. So one of the things that we are doing is uh, we do the live mastermind sessions. So I don't just sell you a piece of software and then that's it. Um, I'm also going to give you access to the mastermind sessions so you can come in and ask questions to me um, and you make sure you're not, you, you have the handholding that you may need to get going. Um, some people are scared uh, when it comes to technology, thinking it's, oh my God, I got to learn this whole new thing. You guys, we've made it really simple. We've got lots of on-demand little bite-sized videos. We've got live training. It's all right here for you. We give you that for free too. All right. So, and then for those of you that are looking to build your buyer's list, I've been building a buyer's list for many years now. It's got over 5,000 people on it and it's all nationwide. So we've got emails, phone numbers, names um, for the entire US. So if you wanted to do wholesale deals and Omaha, Nebraska. Well, we've got people there, right? So this is for the entire whole entire U S and I showed you tonight, how you can build a, a strategic buyers list by looking at the sold property. So buyers is not going to be a problem for you. If you work with us, I, I can guarantee you that. All right. And then finally, for those of you that are looking to do your own fix and flip someday, maybe you already are, um, the rehab depot up in Chicago, they put together really good uh, training that is um, uh, right here. It's, it's a, it's a guidebook that walks you through A to Z, how to do a construction project, working with contractors, how to uh, calculate your budget and lots of little tips and tricks along the way. It's really good. I give you guys this for free too. All right. So um, just a kind of quick summary. So you're going to get the interviews, you're going to get the VIP onboarding and support, uh, the master membership, which gets you grandfathered in at that price with all the new um, um, off-market data leads as they come in. And we're going to give you all this. It's a huge, a huge value, you guys, for 720 bucks. So this may be one of the last times, I, I don't know, but I know when, once we launch Privy Nationwide, our prices are going to change. And uh, I can't tell you what it's going to be because we don't know yet, but I do know that this at 60 bucks a month, essentially, even though you're paying up front is a steal. It's an absolute steal. Uh, I know investors that go and just get licensed just so they have the MLS so they can comp out their properties. Right? And that's a thousand, thousand, thousand dollar in, in investment into CE credits, insurance, all the classes you have to take, the courses. Um, and it's just a pain in the butt. <laughs> And we're, we're telling you, we're getting you access to the, the same data, at, but much more useful and much more actionable because algorithms power everything in automation. So 30 day money back guarantee on that. Um, and then for those of you that are, are on a budget, um, don't let that stop you from getting started. It's 97 bucks per month. 
And I'm still going to give you some bonuses here. So we've got some deal analysis calculators to help you figure out your MAO, um, your construction budget, um, determining, and there's an ARV adjuster as well, and then access to the mastermind as well. So that's a $200 value. Again, all of our plans have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's no risk to getting on board and trying privy out and implementing it into your business. And we'll teach you how to use it. You're not going to have to go out there and figure all this stuff out on your own. So the promo code on this is privy 2021. And, um, and Sean, we talked about a lot of different things tonight, like, you know, from your perspective and being out there, like you're, you're, you're out there doing it. You know, what are some of the takeaways you think that people should look at from tonight's discussion? That uh, data is, is, is what makes things work, guys, is, is data. And if you've got access to it and, and good access to it, which definitely this is what Privy is, this is what it's all about, then, then you're, you're one step ahead of your competition out there, which is, you know, you, you've got to have data. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to make light of that. Uh, you, without it, you'll, you'll fail. <laughs> so without it, you're shooting in the dark. It's like rolling the dice. You might sometimes, you know, land on the number that you want. Um, but if you don't have data to back up what you're doing, you're not going to be able to, to build around that because you can't, you can't scale that. It, it's not scale. It's nothing you can put your hands around or it's not, it's not tangible. It's just all luck. So one big takeaway guys is, is just understand that what we've gone over tonight is the main key is data and you can do it. Don't let yourself be uh, in the mind frame of thinking that just because these are on market deals, that that means that you can't approach them. That's why I, I asked the questions to Benson that I asked, because I know that there's some folks out there in the audience who are probably asking those same questions. You know, how can I utilize this? What are the benefits? So he, he answered those questions, you know, very thoroughly. And I hope that you guys got that because there's no limitations other than the limitations that you put on yourself. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely true. Um, you, you speak the truth. <laughs> uh, it's, it's an important thing. And you talk about mindset and, and data. And I look at data differently um, just because of, of, of how I have evolved in the business. I remember back in the day when data was like a, a, a spreadsheet. Or if it, it was like a, a a line graph and there's this, these things going everywhere and it's showing you like oh it's going up and to the right and so an investor's like well what what do I do with a line that goes up and to the right like that's data but it's not actionable data yeah. right so well the way that we curate the data and the way we collect it in real time and make it actionable is is where really where the difference is you guys and that's what makes us different than any of the other competitors out there who are, you know, in the CRM space or, um, you know, platform, real estate investing platform space, nobody else is doing it this way. There isn't any other platform out there that's got the real time MLS data. There isn't anybody else out there who allows you to track investor activity. So you can see the before and after data on the comps and the flips and be able to put together a better strategy on how to find where your buyers are at based off of like a heat map and all that being updated live and tracked and sending you email updates when things shift. So th that's where the competitive edge comes, you guys, is by, is by leveraging the data in, in a way where you can take action, not just some spreadsheet or, or line graph that you, it sits on your computer and you're like, oh, I'm going to look at that one day and you save it to your desktop and you never do. You never look at it. Mm -hmm. So take action tonight. Uh, the promo code is privy 2021. I put that in the, uh, the chat there. And I'm also going to email this to you guys. So if you're, if you're ready to take action, sign up right now um, and you can start going through the tutorials. And we've got actually have a live training session tomorrow afternoon. So 1 p.m. Eastern is our, our, our last mastermind session of this week. Um, if you guys sign up tonight, you can take part in that. And um, we'll do some more training for you and get you geared up for the weekend so you can really dig in and maybe even start writing some offers right out of the gates. Um, so I uh, had a couple of questions here. I'm going to answer those, but Sean um, and everybody else here that needs to maybe take off. Um, Sean, I thank you so much for being here, Absolutely. man. You're, you're always uh, a, a wealth of knowledge. And um, what I really like about you is that you're not out there just selling courses, right? Like you, you're in the, you're in the, in the woods with these people. You're, you're down in the mud making deals work, like actually closing deals yourself. You're closing deals with your students. And I think that's what sets you apart from them. And we, you're also like a, a cool dude, <laughs> which, which is uh, it's a professional term, by the way. Um, 
but you're relatable, right? And that's what I like about you is that you're not just some guy who's up on stage trying to sell people some exactly. course and then you disappear and you go on to the next city and do it again and again and again. Exactly. Like exactly. You're in the trenches with these people, right? Absolutely, guys. I'm not the Wizard of Oz. I'm a, I'm a regular down-to-earth guy who who uh who just got fed up with uh you know being put my my destiny in other folks' hands and I took it in my own hands and, and now here I am today, guys. Same thing you guys could do. So Sean, um, if, if people want to look more into what you do and how you can help them, where can they go? You guys can reach me at uh, seanyoungcoaches.com and that's S-H-A-U-N-C-O-A-C-H-E-S.com. And that'll give you all of my information, guys. It'll give you links to all of my social media links, my YouTube channel, uh, any podcasts, any, all the free information that I give out. It's a bunch of free stuff there, guys. So, um, also schedule a call with me if you feel like I'd be a good fit for you for a one-on-one uh, head on over there and let's schedule a call. Let's jump on a call together and see if we'd be a good match together. Yeah, you guys, I put it here in the chat for you if you want to go check it out right now, but I'll also put Sean's information in the replay I'm going to send out. So I'm going to send out the deal details so you can sign up um, with the links and with the discounts. Um, also, uh, I'm going to send out Sean's info so you can kind of uh, do more research and see if, if Sean is somebody. One of the things we didn't talk m- much about tonight was um, the virtual assistants. Sean has a really amazing program on um, hiring VAs. And um, Sean, you, just quickly, what do you what is that program all about? Sure, guys. If you're looking for a virtual assistant, if you're looking for someone to handle that heavy lifting for you, you know, do the the research for you on your behalf, um, run those comps for you, send out those offers, you know follow up all those type of things that, that need to be done for you and have to be done in spite of you, then look, reach out to me, guys. I've got some of the best virtual assistants in the market. I, I stand behind my, my team. Um, I'll stand them up beside anyone out there who says they've got a quality virtual assistant company. I, I put my guys and gals right beside those. And, uh, and we, we're, we're dedicated to improving on a daily basis to bringing our clients value. So, um, so guys, reach out. Um, it's a $4.99 one-time registration fee for those virtual assistants. And then it's $5 per hour to utilize um, the services. So guys, $5 per hour at 20 hours, it's $100 per week. That's nothing, man. And that, that 500 bucks up front too, That's that gets them trained and that Absolutely. you handle all of the matchmaking and making sure that you're finding the right VA for somebody. Because I've gone through and I've tried to hire VAs. It's a nightmare. You go out to uh, some of these websites that are online and you have to go through and you have to look at all of the, um, the resumes and you have to go through their history. And yep. I mean, and if I you don't, don't have time now, VA at you, absolutely. Yeah, find it's, important. it's important. I don't just throw one at you. I give you three to choose from and I give you vo- uh, uh, voice resumes. So they'll, they'll give you their, their resume by voice since you'll be mainly uh, speaking to them by voice or they might be cold callers. That would be highly important to hear them speak and to hear them articulate you know, what their skill set is. So you'll get three to choose from, guys. So I, I don't just throw something at you. Now, let's say that that one you choose does not work out for you for whatever the reason. Within 60 days, just let me know. We'll make a switch at no additional cost. There's no additional registration fees for you. We'll make sure that we take care of you. And, I, and I'll say this, since we've been running the, our virtual assistant company, uh, which is called REI World Solutions, we have not had to make a switch yet. So I'm, I'm proud wow. of that. Wow. Those are good, Mark, those are good ratios. Absolutely. Never make a switch. Never um, make a switch. Well, you guys check that out. It, it's going to be valuable for you, especially if you're trying to scale. You know, Sean mentioned earlier, like you want to start, stop treating your business like it's a hobby and start treating it like a business. So that includes look at things as costs. These are investments. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's an investment into your company. So having people there who can do all the tedious tasks, you can spend your time on money-making activities, having the proper data there uh, so that you can run your analysis, make sure your numbers are right. Make sure you have the confidence in your numbers. I know a lot of people here are probably aren't putting out as many offers as they could because they're just not sure about the values, not sure about the maximum allowable offer and the comps aren't looking right and there's something's just not right. Um, when you put these, these business tools in place with the proper data and the automation, it, it solves a lot of that for you. So take a chance, hundred percent money back guarantee within 30 days. And, um, you know, just try us out. We, we, we're not going anywhere, right? We're moving and shaking. We're making things happen. 
the new system, the new software with all the data that's coming out in a matter of weeks, get in there, lock in your pricing. And um, I'm looking forward to work with you. So Sean, thanks again for being here. I'm going to answer some questions, but um, everybody who has to go, um, have a good night. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you guys. And guys, get in there now, guys. Take advantage now. Awesome software. Awesome tool, guys. With this crayon on my head, I'm seated on the throne. The top is so alone. Only thing that keeps me gone is I know my city love me. I know my city love me.